my name is Emma and today I am reviewing Winter by Marissa Meyer. Now Winter is the final book, the conclusion of the Lunar Chronicle series and this book focuses on the retelling of Snow White and it was absolutely phenomenal and I could not avoid reviewing it. I absolutely give Winter 5 out of 5 stars. It was super action packed and there was so much character depth and the plot was non-stop exciting and suspenseful. It is most definitely one of the best conclusions to a series that I have read in a very long time. I really commend Marissa Meyer for being able to write so many different points of views with so many different things happening but still have it be a very cohesive book. Like there's always at least three points of view and then somebody is getting kidnapped and then they're getting rescued and somebody else is getting trapped and then someone almost dies and then people are kissing. This book is a constant thriller and it is written so beautifully. I really loved getting to know Wintermore. In the first three books she was kind of like a phantom like we've heard of her but we didn't really know her. She was basically just like this crazy princess trapped in a castle on Luna. But she's actually so precious and adorable and one of my absolute favorite characters in this entire series. She's just so innocent and purely good and I want to protect her with my life. But in all, I absolutely loved Winter. I really feel like there was no better way to end this series and I honestly do not have any problems with it whatsoever. I am so unbelievably satisfied with this amazing massive book. The only thing I'm upset about is these stupid Bible thin pages. Like whose executive decision was this? Well, that was smooth. It's just so flimsy and this massive epic conclusion to this crazy series is so tiny now and I'm not a fan. But as I'm getting more and more excited to talk about Winter, I'm going to be moving into the spoilery section. So if you haven't read Winter yet, I really recommend going to read Winter and then coming back so we can discuss it all together. But for now, that's it for the non-spoiler section, so bye non-spoiler people! First of all, let's talk more about Winter, because she is my precious little baby. I really love her relationship with Jason. Jason Jackin, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but we're gonna go with Jason. Clearly none of us like Jason from the beginning because of what happened in Crest, but from the beginning of it, he's just super protective over her, and I can't help but kind of like him. Their whole relationship just feels super true and real and honest because there's so much history built up around them, which is not something we get a lot in YA because generally the whole book's point is that the girl meets the guy, and then that's where their story starts. But Winter and Jason have been together since they were kids, and they make all these references to when they were children and playing together, and it's just super adorable. Now, I was really not expecting Lavana to order Jason to kill Winter. Now, I understand that Lavana is super evil, and she She's a raging bitch and she kills a ton of people, but it was just super personal and like I'm not okay with it. I absolutely loved the kiss between Winter and Jason before he like stages her murder. Again, it was just super cute and sweet and genuine and it was really interesting because generally the main couple of a book, like this is clearly Winter's book so she's the protagonist, generally the unrequited love interest and her don't really kiss until like the middle or the end of the book and this happened right in the beginning before stuff even started so I thought that was really interesting on Marissa Meyer's part. Now with these books that have like these crazy rebellions they tend to be more in like dystopians but because the Lunar Chronicles takes place in like this far away time and like the world's completely different it's kind of like a dystopian so I'm gonna associate it with that. The rebellions always tend to be like really premeditated and they kind of all play out the same way and Winter really doesn't so I really appreciate that. When the whole crew is in Wolf's home sector and like they're trying to convince all of the citizens that Winter is Selene and she's leading this revolt against Levana, the whole rebellion seems super helpless. Most of these dystopian rebellion stories have like this whole massive organization that's been building for years to lead a very successful rebellion and here all we've got is a cyborg, an emperor that's trapped in the lunar castle, we've got a farm girl, we've got a mutated soldier, we've got a captain and a thief, and we got a hacker. Doesn't sound very successful to me. Oh, and don't forget the delusional princess. I honestly was like super scared for this rebellion from the beginning. Like I totally did not think that they would win just because of the way that Marissa wrote it like completely from scratch and I love it. It was super refreshing. I was super touched when all of the citizens were like, we accept you as a queen, you're the true queen of Luna and we're going to revolt against Luana even though all of the people around them, all of their neighbors and loved ones were being killed by these guards. The whole rebellion had seemed super futile at that point and I had no idea how they were going to pull it off but after that scene it gave me so much hope and like I feel like that's really where the story began. Another scene that made me really emotional was when Winter and Scarlet are with the wolf pack and they're trying to convince them to join their side. Not only am I terrified because I honestly think they're gonna die, but as soon as the alphas find out that 
that Winter refuses to use her gift and she literally is going crazy because of it because she wants to be a good person. Oh my god. I guess that's where it really hit me that these wolves are being constantly manipulated and abused by people who have this lunar gift and now they're presented with somebody who refuses to use it and they clearly don't come in contact with those people a lot. So like my heart melted when they agreed to help because it was just super genuine and I was really happy for the wolves and I was really happy for Winter and Cinder and all of them. Now somehow. I had almost forgotten that Winter is actually a retelling of a fairy tale, and so as soon as that creepy old woman picked up those sour apple petites, I'm like, oh my god, it's the apple scene. How did I forget that? Can someone explain? I also didn't realize that it would actually be Levana that gave it to her, and like I was aware that she had said that she had to take care of her stepdaughter by herself, but it was just super shocking to me to have her just like appear out of nowhere in the sector that she's probably never set foot in, and like try and kill her own stepdaughter. Like. Okay, girl, you got some issues. Another scene that made me super emotional was the whole battle. Literally everyone is dying. It seriously looks like they're gonna lose and I still don't understand how they won. The entire rebellion side is being manipulated by the thermaturges, thermatages, therma, thermo and I'm just a hot mess reading it, but this never happens when I'm reading these conclusions that involve the rebellion. They can never hold my interest and Winter really did. The only thing I didn't understand while reading this book is when Winter manipulates Scarlet into killing Amory for them. Of course I'm like shocked and blown away that Winter is actually using her gift for the first time since she was a little kid, but like I just don't understand why she did it. I mean if Scarlet and Wolf were there and they saw that Jason and Winter were being trapped by Amory and they were like about to die, I think they would have done something on their own. So I don't really understand why Winter felt the need to manipulate Scarlet in the first place. I mean the only thing that I can really guess happened was Winter was afraid that Amory was going to manipulate Scarlet himself to either kill Winter and Jason or do something else or whatever it was. That's my only guess, but I'm really interested to see if anyone else picked on something else in that. That would kind of explain that whole little thing. That is like my only flaw with the book just because I didn't really understand why she felt the need to. Now I was absolutely disgusted at that part where Levana is making Thorn and Scarlet fight Cinder for her. Like how weak of a person do you have to be to sit on a throne while someone is trying to kill you and not fight for yourself but have other people fight for you? God, I hate her so much. That whole climactic scene where Cinder is trying to kill Levana was just fucking crazy. I absolutely wanted to die when Thorn stabbed Cress because I'm like, Oh my god, like Chris is gonna die, this is gonna be the only death in the book, and it's gonna be Cress, and it's gonna be at Thorne's hand, and then Thorne's gonna have to live with the fact that he killed Cress, and oh my god. Not to mention the fact that they're gonna die without ever actually admitting their love for each other. Okay, I'm gonna calm down, that didn't actually happen. But then Cinder and Lavana had like that crazy mind power battle. All I could think about while reading the scene is if it was like a movie, and there was like a lot of intense music, while like Cinder was like physically fighting with Thorne, and Cress, and Scarlet, and whoever else Lavana manipulated, and then all of a sudden they stand up, and it goes completely silent and like they're having a staring contest because they were each controlling each other to have their gun to their head and like they're trying to concentrate on not shooting themselves and shooting the other person. I personally think that seeing that scene would look absolutely ridiculous but that's just my opinion. And I'm so mad because Cinder was going to show Levana mercy and she deserves to be thrown off a cliff. Levana's like, oh poor me, like let me have my beauty, I don't care about my throne. And then she just stabs Cinder in the heart and then Cinder shoots Levana and it's just chaos. I do really wish that we had seen more of Levana's death though. She gets shot and we see like blood splatter on the throne room before Cinder blacks out, but that's really all we get. I just feel like as such an evil villain, she deserved more of a death than just having Cinder and Kai say, Levana is dead, Levana is dead. Like, there should have been more than just that confirmation. Like, I wanted to see the light leave her eyes. I need to center myself, I'm getting too emotional. Now remember how I said that I forgot that this book is a fairy tale retelling. Forgot this not once in this book, but twice. I like flipped a shit when Jason kissed Winter awake. I was like, again, how did I forget this? This is such a big thing in Snow White. I just really love how Marissa Meyer is able to create this epic world with all this action and destruction and craziness, but she's also able to throw in that like little bit of fairy tale magic that we all know and love from her childhood. Like these are my favorite retellings ever. Like I just love them so much. Another scene that I absolutely loved was when the whole crew is all together right before Cinder's coronation and they're just eating cake. <laughs> like, it was just super adorable to see them after all of this like battle and war and rebellion and they're just chilling just standing around eating cake. Cinder gets some on her dress like that was typical. Like they don't have silverware so Jason cuts into it with his dagger and they're just eating it with their hands. Oh my god it was such a cute best friend moment. But of course they just split up again. Like yeah Thorn and Christ go off to explore the world together and Scarlet and Wolf go back to the farm and live happily ever after no pun intended and Winter goes on to be the Lunar Ambassador and Jason is her guard. But I'm like seriously upset that 
Kai and Cinder are on like completely different planets. Like they've been through so much. Can't they just live happily ever after? No pun intended again. One final thing. Like I promise this is like the last thing I'm going to say about Winter because this review is way too long. Because I was absolutely not expecting Cinder to suggest a democracy for Luna and abdicate her throne. Like girl, you almost died for this. Like why are you giving it up so soon? I mean it was clear from the beginning that Cinder never really wanted to be queen. Like can you really see her just sitting on a throne on Luna for the rest of her life? No. But the thought of Cinder changing the entire monarchy of Luna is like ridiculous and super interesting and like I really wish we had a chance to see like how that would all play out with all of the citizens. Alright so this review is done. I totally was not able to cover absolutely everything I wanted to talk about because this book is 800 pages of awesome and I wish I could have talked about every single page but that would probably take like eight hours. But basically I am so in love with Winter like it was absolutely one of my favorite books of the entire year and it was one of the best conclusions that I've ever read. I thought it was the most perfect final installment of such a fantastic series and I would really love to know what you guys thought. Whether it be on what I've said in this review or on the book in general, leave something below so we can discuss it because I just I loved Winter so much. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new one. Bye!